So you'd like to create your own unique 3D print, but you lack any 3D modeling skills. Well, you're in luck because now with AI, you can use text to image generation combined with AI image 3D modeling to create your own cool 3D prints such as this. This is Rohan of Creativerific and stay tuned as I'll show you how you could create your own unique 3D prints with just a few prompts and clicks of a button. Okay, so to get started, just head over to chatgpt.com and we're gonna be using the Dolly image generator that they have. So Dolly is included in the paid version of ChatGPT, but not to worry, a free alternative that I recommend is Canva's AI image generator, which is included with their free plan. I'll make sure that I'm providing free alternatives for any of the resources along the way as well. So jumping back over to ChatGPT, we're gonna be using the Dolly AI image generator, as I mentioned. If you're on your ChatGPT Pro plan and you can't find Dolly, just click Explore GPTs and you can either type it in here or if you just scroll down you'll see Dolly by ChatGPT and you could just click it to add it to your tools or there are other image generators as well offered by the community. Unfortunately I didn't record the entire process for the image that I generated in the thumbnail as well as the 3D print that I showed earlier but I think that this will reproduce the same results so let's see what happens. I'll also add this prompt in the video description so that you guys can play around with it as well. So this looks pretty close to what I had. Not the exact same, but I think I like this one better. This one's just a bit too many teeth. What I'm really going for or trying to create more or less is Count Orloff from Nosferatu, but Dolly seems to have trouble when I use his name as a prompt sometimes, as well as there's sometimes copyright issues. So I found that using Mr. Barlow from Salem's Lot produced more or less the same results. So this is pretty decent here. I do wish that the arms were a little bit raised. You're able to highlight just certain areas of the image as well so that you can edit it by typing the new prompt. I'm just gonna type this new prompt without highlighting anything though and see what happens. Not really what I was looking for. I do want to keep the hands inward on the body. Yeah, so this is the issue I have with Dali. Despite the different prompts that I'll put in and even highlighting areas and giving clear instructions, it just more or less gives the same image a lot of times. But if anybody has any tips that they could share for getting better results that you could leave in the chat, that'd be appreciated. Okay, so for this next step, I'm just gonna refine the image a bit, remove the background before I send it off to the AI 3D modeling program. But really quickly, I'd like to take a moment to highlight my paid sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome company offering high quality custom prototyping and fabrication services. They also do 3D printing and offer less common materials like aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium. Their pricing is affordable, they have low order minimums, they provide instant quotes with just a click of a button, and they make ordering simple. Just upload your model, input your quantity and material type, then hit the submit request button. Your order can then be finalized after receiving more accurate pricing via email. Visit PCBWay.com to get started today. All right, let's get back to it. I'm using Photoshop here, which again is a paid subscription, but don't worry, as I said, I'll mention free alternatives. And with Photopea, you'll be able to achieve the same thing. Link in the description. This step isn't actually required, by the way, and you could just skip to the next section if you like. The most that you might want to do is make the background white since that will convert better with the AI image to 3D generator. And that could even be done in the previous step by just typing white background in the text to image prompt. What I'm basically trying to achieve here though is getting this figure to look like Count Orloff from Nosferatu. If you haven't seen it, I'd recommend checking it out. I thought it was pretty good. Content, please take a moment to like and subscribe to this channel as well as turn on the notification bell. I really appreciate each and everyone's support and it helps to continue to make videos like this. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm just gonna save it so that we can send it off for AI 3D modeling. All right, so the platform of choice for AI 3D modeling is Maker World. And you'll be able to find this feature under the Maker Lab tab. And then you could just click Image to 3D Model. 
So this is just one option, and Maker World is from Bamboo Lab, but you don't need to have a Bamboo Lab 3D printer to access this feature. This is free as well, it's only going to cost you a few points, which you accumulate from performing different tasks like downloading models, etc. But if you prefer something outside of the Bamboo Lab ecosystem, an alternative that I recommend is Meshing.ai, and we'll upload to both and see how they turn out. There's also a lot of really cool tools though, available on Maker Lab that I'd like to explore later, so stay tuned for that. So anyways, let's upload our model, Hit generate and see what it spits out. All right, this is what Maker Lab produced and it's not perfect. You can see this missing a finger on each hand and there are some floating aspects. I think that my first render did a better job of modeling. If you click mesh, you'll see a more accurate representation of what your 3D print might look like without the texture applied. Let's try regenerating and then see what happens. At the same time, let's jump over to Meshi and see what that produces. All right, so Meshi gave us a few options to choose from. And you can see that the hands don't look good in either of them. They look like a mess, absolute mess in a couple of them. There's tools for refining, but in order to access some of them, you need a paid plan. Let's just go with this one since this looks like the least messed up of all the hands. And then, we are going to click confirm. So whereas Maker Lab just gives us the one version of model with texture, this gives us four different options of models that we could choose from and then it applies the texture. All right, so this is the second try on Maker Lab and the hands did come out better. This hand's still missing a finger and the hands are kind of floating off the shoulder when they should be attached. This one looks better and then there's better joining here. Let's take a look at what it looks like with the texture. And yeah, a bit of a hot mess, but looks okay, I guess. <laughs> the first version came out much better. If I go over to here, my first version came out better. You can see all fingers are there. It's hugging onto his shoulder properly. There's nothing too crazy coming off. And also the pedestal I added in Photoshop, like I just added a few a couple of rectangle shapes underneath behind the image layer. And then it perfectly modeled out a pedestal for the figure to be on. Not too bad, not too shabby. And then if you look at the mesh, you know, a lot of the detail that was in the texturing is not there, but still okay for an AI generated image that you're then converting to an AI 3D model. All right, so now this is done. It has the texture applied. Okay, so this one actually looks not too bad with the texture. It would need a base. It's also open on the bottom. So it would need a base and some further refining for sure. The hands look like a mess. Um, it would be better obviously if the hands were just dropped down by the side, which I did try in another version, an earlier version being this one. Yeah, so I just eliminated the hands because I was having issues with it the last time. So this program, I find that um, I find that Maker Lab does a better job of handling hands, but I find that the detail in here looks better. So with Meshi, better detail with texturing, but poor hands. And then with Maker Lab, poor job with texturing, but better job of creating hands and just better job overall of creating a model that's ready for 3D print. I also tried generating something like this. If you were to go with something like this, say, you're obviously gonna have a much easier time 3D printing. You look at the mesh, it's much more simplified. So you could just experiment with it. I was just trying to create something that I like, and that's off of the recent release of Nosferatu. But by all means, have fun with it, experiment, create your style, and see what you could come up with. Okay, so jumping back over to here, the last thing to do with either Meshi or Maker Lab or whatever AI to 3D model program that you're using is just hit download. And typically it's gonna download in an OBJ format, which will have all the textures and colors applied. Or sometimes you have option of downloading just STL format. In this instant for Maker Lab, it's an OBJ format, which will open up in your slicer with the appropriate settings that you need. For Meshi, say I wanted to download this version, I just hit download. You select the format that you'd want. You have OBJ, STL, and others, and you just hit download. So then the last thing to do is just to open in our 3D printing slicer and send it off to print. So as you can see, here's our 3D model ready for print. No issues. Pedestals there. 
It has the textures applied to different colors. You could also assign different colors when you're loading them in or reassign them here. Or you could remove all of the unwanted filament to just print in one color if you want. I just want to make sure that I have some supports enabled. I'm going to go tree supports. All right, let's hit slice. All right, so we're looking at about three hours for this print to complete. So I'll just hit print to send this off and that's it. This honestly doesn't look too terrible to me. Of course, we're missing the details in the face, but I think this is a good starting point. I'll follow up with a video showing how you could bring out the details even further. But the way that the Maker Lab Image to 3D Generator handled the graphic was pretty impressive. And here's a comparison of the Maker World 3D model versus the Meshy 3D model. And you can see that the Maker World version did a much better job of capturing the hands, the ears, and the base. So let me know what you guys think. You could comment below in the video. As well as don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you like 3D printing content and look out for my other videos as well. Thanks for watching and until next time, see you then.